Hi everyone, welcome to the inaugural GWM Ironman 70.3 Melbourne. It's my pleasure to take you through the athlete briefing for the race. My name is Carl Smith, I am your race director, and we have David, Dave and Peter who make up the senior technical official team from Triathlon Australia. Ironman 70.3 Melbourne respectfully acknowledges that this event is held on traditional lands of the Bunurong people and pays respect to elders, both past, present and emerging. Today I'm going to take you through a high level overview of what to expect during the course of your athlete experience for the event. Starting with the Athlete Information Guide or the AIG, this is your single source of truth and outlined all of the finer details of your event from A to Z. It's available online. Please read this before coming to the event. It's a, a great source of information to give you as much detail as possible to make your experience as, as best as we possibly can. You must be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 to participate. There will be vaccination verification at athlete check-in. And we ask that you please do not remove your athlete wristband until well after the race and after you have collected your bike. We're also hopeful that all athletes will observe social distancing where possible. Event schedule. So we go live on Friday the 18th of March in Katani Gardens, which, are, which is our main event hub, HQ. 11.30 a.m. we open the doors for our expo and official Ironman merchandise store down in Katani, and then at 12 o'clock, the allocated athlete check-in commences again in Katani Gardens, and that closes at 7 p.m. on the Friday. Saturday the 19th, we open up at 9.30 for allocated athlete check-in through to 4.30, so please make sure you check in during these times. And at 10 o'clock through to 4.30, there is compulsory bike racking, and again, allocated times that you would have pre-selected before coming to the event. So make sure you rack your bike uh, in that uh, time duration. Highly recommend coming to one of the transition tours. They're held at 11 a.m., 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. in the transition area, uh, especially if you're a first timer and you haven't raced with us before. These are a great way to get as much understanding as possible around the flows and, and uh, what to expect around that area of the race. Race day, Sunday the 20th. Transition opens at 6.15, closes at 7.15, and we have a rolling age group race to start at 7.20 a.m. Once our last finish crosses the line, we will go straight into our award presentations and Ironman 70.3 World Championship roll down from 4 p.m. all at Katani Gardens. This is the venue. We're lucky enough to be hosted down there at Katani Gardens. It's a beautiful heritage listed venue, uh, some beautiful scenery, great uh, famous palm tree lined pathways overlooking the, the bay. If you follow my cursor here, I'll just take you through and identify where some of the key areas are. This is your athlete check-in. This is where the expo area will be, merchandise, event information in here as well. This is your transition area. There's a bike mechanic on the outside of that. And this is your finish line, which will then lead into recovery and the medical area and your athlete exit. This is where street gear will also be located. And then for all the tri clubs out there, this is where the tri clubs will be located with great vantage points of transition, bike exit and entry, run exit and finish line. This is what to expect in your race kit that you'll pick up at athlete check-in and carrying over to the next lot of items. If you have any questions, please speak to the athlete services team. They'll be more than happy to help. Bike check-in is on Saturday. It's compulsory to rack your bike between 10 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Please come at your scheduled time. You will be given your timing chip at bike check-in. Please make sure you wear this on your left ankle during the race and you hand it over once you've finished. If you don't wear your timing chip, we can't validate that you've completed the course and you'll therefore get no race time. Please advise if you do lose your timing chip during the race, the event personnel will be happy to issue you another one. 
And importantly, if you are withdrawing from the race, please make sure you hand back your timing chip at the information tent so we know where you are. Relay teams, they must all be, all members must be present at athlete check-in. Your timing chip is your relay baton. Please make sure you transfer that from swimmer to cyclist to runner. Uh, you'll all be using the same one. And that timing chip transfer or handover should happen at your bike rack. Please make sure all the team members are wearing their wristbands at all times during the race. And only the runner is required to wear the race bib during the run leg. Swimmers and cyclists can reunite with the runners at the top of the finish chute to run down through the finish line together. Bike mechanics, we've got uh, bike tech support at transition for bike racking on Saturday for minor repairs and then on race day itself at transition in the morning and then we've got a couple of mobile mechanics out on the bike course during the race. Really they're there just for emergency repairs and assistance. Um, please try and be as self-sufficient as you can. There may be long waits for mechanics throughout the day just due to number of athletes and the uh, length of course that they have to cover. Race morning, uh, transition will be accessible from 6.15 to 7.15. Please bring your uh, helmet for compulsory helmet checks and all of your other race items, including your street gear. The official wetsuit ruling will be made on race morning, but we're fully expecting that it will be a wetsuit legal race. So please bring your wetsuits along if you plan to swim in them. Uh, the water temp we're expecting uh, in the low 20s. I'll just take you through the flow pre-swim start. So once you arrive on the morning, you'll park on the side streets, um, walk in. You'll then access transition through the top here. Make final adjustments to your bike. You'll then be pushed out of the northern end, which is where your run exit is. And you'll be able to access this bank of toilets here, which is the last opportunity to use toilets before you hit the swim start. So please make sure you use those. Uh, you'll then drop your street gear over here on the exit to recovery in the street gear tent and then we'll ask that you walk out onto pier road and down to the swim start it is a five six minute walk so please be um, prompt and make sure you're uh, there with a few minutes to spare before that 7:20 race start so you're not rushing we do also need to respect the local regulations around amplified music uh, so we won't be playing any music or amplified sound before 9am to respect the residents of the host community, um, but we will be making event announcements through the PA system. I'm going to take you through the courses just shortly, um, but it's important to note that we will be racing under 2021 Ironman race rules and regulations, which are available on our website, and there's the responsibility of all athletes to read and understand these as well as the athlete's responsibility to know the prescribed course and follow it swim course it is the roca 1.9 kilometer swim it's one lap there is no swim warm-up available so please warm up on south beach reserve or on the promenade or on the beach it's a rolling start where we'll be pulsing four athletes approximately every five seconds to spread them through the swim, starting at 7.20 a.m. Line up on the beach according to your swim time. Fastest swimmers go first. There'll be four zones. These are the zone times for your expected swims and your swim cap should correlate accordingly. There'll be signage and volunteers on the beach to help marshal you in the right area. Pink boys are your turning boys. There's four of them. And then your orange boys are your line of sights. Your first pink turn boy is a left hand turn, your second is a right hander, your third is a right hander and your fourth and final is a right hander before heading towards the swim exit. And once you've exited the water, run through the arch and you'll run back up pier road and into transition. Water safety is provided by Jan Juk Surf Life Saving Club. They do an amazing job. But if you do need assistance during the swim, please raise your arm. And if in the unlikely event there is a swim cancellation, we will communicate that on race morning via the PA systems. And really important if you are withdrawing from the race that you go and let the event personnel know and hand your timing chip into the information tent. 
Once you finish the swim, you'll run up Pier Road, you'll then turn a right into the back of the finish line in Katadi Gardens, up your bike rack, grab your helmet and your bike, and then run out onto the road where you'll mount uh, about 20 metres onto Beaconsfield Parade. The bike course is two laps, 90 kilometres, uh, down to Mentone from St Kilda. It's a complete road closure. There are kilometre markers every 15k, two mobile bike mechanics and a sag wagon for any withdrawals. There's two aid stations for a, a total of four passes, and you'll see the kilometre markers there. One penalty box, which is on your final approach into transition. Um, it'll be well marked just before the Royal Melbourne Yacht Squadron on Beaconsfield Parade uh, with the technical officials there waiting to enforce the penalties. And just to note, please be considerate of all athletes, but especially considerate and respectful of our physically challenged athletes. We have one visually impaired athlete that will be out there on the course on a tandem bike with her guide. So please be respectful with passing um, around that area. This is your product order. You'll have water and Gatorade served in bittens, uh, followed by Morton gels back into Gatorade, back into water, and you'll have toilets available there also. Any littering or disposal of any uh, event rubbish, so bittens, gel wrappers, banana skins, etc., please make sure you do that at the aid station zones only. Uh, otherwise, you may be penalised or disqualified. We want to make sure that we're looking after the host community and the environment around us so we can come back year after year. A few key points around race rules. It's a 12 meter draft zone. It's a non-drafting race. And uh, please, yeah, as I said, please make sure there's 12 meters between your bike and the bike in front and some other key rules and regs there. Penalties likely shown for drafting, blocking, illegal passing and littering. There's yellow cards, 30 seconds, Blue cards, five minute time penalties, and red is disqualification. And I've mentioned the penalty box location already. This is your transition to bike to run. So once you finish your second lap of the bike, you'll veer left, jump off your bike at the dismount line on the road, and then head back into transition, drop your bike, get ready for your run, and then you'll head north out to the run exit. There'll be a water station on the exit, and then you'll head out into the run course proper. The Hoka 21.1 kilometre half marathon starts at Katani Gardens, heads north for a short 200 metres for turning around and then heading south using the beachside path and cycle lanes down to Elwood and then turning around to come back again. And you'll do that twice before finishing into Katani Gardens. It is an anti-clockwise course. Please keep right at all times. You will be sharing the pathway with public so there'll be cyclists and walkers out there um, as well. After completing two laps, as I said, you'll head into the finish line. There's three aid stations for you out there for a total of 10 hits. And every two kilometers will be marked. And these, this is how your product will be ordered at the aid stations. Water into Gatorade and Cola, into food, high five bars, Morton gels, into Gatorade and Cola water, toilets, and littering just at the aid station zones as well, please. And they're the kilometre markers that you'll hit them on each lap. There will also be Red Bull served at Run Aid Station 3, which is the far southern aid station uh, near the turnaround. As I said, once you finish your second lap, you'll turn right into the famous Katani Gardens palm tree lined finish chute down to the red carpet, through the finish line and into the recovery area where medical will be available also. Once you finish, the volunteers will assess you, medicals there if required, they'll present you with your medals and your towels and then they'll guide you through recovery and uh, they'll take your timing chips. We ask that it's a continuous flow through there, we want to keep athletes moving, grab their nutrition, hydration, uh, heading back out to the reunite area with family and friends and your street gear bags will be available there also. We ask athletes only in the finish shoot, please. Uh, you will be disqualified if you bring family members, including children, down the finish shoot. Um, so please, please don't do it. It's for everyone's safety and, and uh, providing the best experience possible for everyone. As I said, relay team members are allowed to join the runner for the last 80 or so meters run into the finish line. These are your cutoff times uh, for the swim, bike and run. 
and there are intermediate points as well. These are all outlined in your AIG, so please look at those and make sure that, um, yeah, we're, uh, we're not talking to you at those intermediate points. Medical, we've got a, a great medical team on board. There'll be medical staff around the venues and on course. Please look after yourself and those around you and uh, speak to the event personnel if you need any medical assistance. We're lucky enough to have the support of over 250 volunteers from the local community. They'll be wearing red shirts and as always, please remember to thank them during and after the race. We cannot do this without them. The award ceremony takes place on Sunday at 4 p.m. down in Katani Gardens near the check-in area. We'll be awarding top three athletes in each age group category. So please come and attend that. And then we'll go straight into the Ironman 70.3 World Championship roll down ceremony where we'll be giving away 45 age group qualifying slots for the race in St. George, Utah, USA on the 28th and 29th of October this year. You must be present to claim your slot. All that remains is for me to wish you all the best of luck. We cannot wait to see you all down there. Uh, it's going to be an amazing event and uh, yeah, all the best with final preparations and uh, all the best with uh, your race. Cheers.